it's time for FOMO. So we are looking at Netflix, arguably the story, if not one of the biggest stories of the day, seeing a pretty negative reaction to its earnings. And this is a company I think that's showing signs of maturation. This is not going to be a name that puts up such strong percentage growth on a year over year basis because they're just, you know, established. They have changed and evolved their business model. Although I will say there were some holes I could find in this report. I understand the selling today, but a name to me that's just showing signs of being a more stable player. Yeah, they pulled the ace out of the sleeve, the, the rabbit out of the hat, that kind of final uh, move with uh, the password sharing crackdown and incentivizing individuals to sign up that maybe weren't already signed up before. We've gone through this so many times, but the conversation uh, couldn't be more in line with Tesla, which is, you know, they're maybe having more people buy cars, or in this case, more people signed up for the service, but they're making a little bit less money on each one of those signups. Down the line, maybe more ads integrated, uh, potentially continued price hikes, and, and working on getting the cost of creating the content or getting content on the service down is the story for Netflix. So that's okay, that can be good news, but it's maybe gonna garner a different type of investor. Maybe it's not going to be the high-flying stock of yesteryear going forward. Maybe it'll be a little bit more of a cash flow generator. Again, not a bad thing, just different. But we're not quite there yet, Jenny. We're in this transition, uh, this transitory phase between the two. Um, and I think that makes uh, investing and trading in this name potentially uh, a little bit more interesting. But you're gonna go through the numbers uh, and talk to us a little bit about what we heard. and. I think there's still a lot to like about this report. I do too, and I do think that the more positive thesis surrounding Netflix is still intact, even with today's you know almost 9% move to the downside. We did see this company say they're rolling out their paid sharing to almost all the remaining countries this week. Paid net ads, though, did come in around 5.9 million. This was well above what the street had been forecasting. They did end the quarter with about 238 million global paid subscribers. This figure was up 8% year over year. Now, going forward, they do anticipate third quarter revenue of it's around 8.5 8.5 billion versus estimates of around 8.7 billion. That to me was the biggest miss across the board. The fact that we do see some softer revenue guidance moving ahead, but their third quarter earnings they expect to come in around 352 a share, well above the consensus at around 324 a share. Now this name still fairly loved by the street analysts that cover it. We do see 11 buys, 20 holds, 200 performs, and two sells in Netflix here. The average price target though I thought was so interesting into this earnings bet. It is around $420 a share right now. So even price into this earnings event, we were expecting some weakness, at least in, different, in terms of gauging the analysts' 12-month price targets. They did not see further upside in Netflix's shares, which I thought was so interesting. A name that has had a really banner 12 months, now up about 47% on the year and pacing for its biggest percentage drop since April of 2022, but still up 104% from its low. So like you said, I think trading this name going forward is going to be a little bit difficult here because it's, it's restructured structured itself. It's a different Netflix than it was a year, two years ago. And now it is, is able to post growth, just not the same degree of growth we know from Netflix. And this is easily the most negative reaction we've seen to Netflix's earnings all year long, Alex. The early uh, last year and the, the base of the first two quarters of reports uh, in, in 2022 were devastating in Netflix. And the fact that it's basically uh, in you know a stone's throw of kind of where it was before those is impressive. I mean, this stock went from $700 to 160, and even after this move is still in the mid 400s. I mean, at some point, there's just a limit to what uh, this stock can do in a, in a relatively short period of time. It got decimated last year. Um, this is nothing like the devastation of those two earnings events where on one of them, I think it lost like 40% of its value overnight. And so and that was after losing already like half its value uh, just in uh, some of the weakness leading in. So the one year chart paints a different story and I can still see why there's optimism for this name, but uh, you know, there's obviously concerns as well. And maybe that kind of shaping of what the, the narrative can look like for Netflix will, will be a little bit different. So Jenny, I kind of leaned into both sides of that argument and looked at a skewed put butterfly below the market here. This is a strategy that is omnidirectional. The best case scenario is actually a price that's lower than the current share price, but it's a neutral bullish strategy because it's done for a credit. And if the stock just doesn't move and stayed here uh, until that August 18th expiration, these options expired worthless, well, it would be a profitable trade strategy in that point. It would perform a lot like a short put vertical uh, in the event that all these options were out of the money. But we've looked at these before. Uh, it essentially consists of buying a debit spread 
and selling a credit spread and they converge at that same short strike but in this case the credit spread is ten dollars wide and the debit spread is only five dollars wide so it's done for a net credit that net credit of a dollar fifty is basically your max profit above a four hundred and thirty dollars a share however the best case scenario and where this thing can expand to as much as 650 is at the short strike of uh, 425 and so that would be a scenario where the stock would actually be nine dollars lower it's a neutral to bullish strategy and that's your best case scenario at expiration so it is a little omnidirectional but more importantly it brings that break even down even further down to 418 and a half increasing that probability uh, and likelihood of success just ever so slightly. It is risk defined, of course, as well. Limited to 350 in total risk. That takes place below 415, which is the final long strike below the market uh, on the put side there. And so, a neutral to bullish strategy, Jenny, but a little bit of an added kicker if it does just sort of inch lower towards 425. I think that's really well put. And I also think you made a great point about the fact that we have seen some serious selling post earnings in Netflix shares. It almost feels like 9%. Well, I don't want to discount what is a big move to the downside we've seen much worse in netflix so we've weathered worse storms it feels like but that'll do it for our fomo segment today